Welcome to a Gears 5 basics tutorial on the map editing. Um, so there's a couple things that I wanted to cover, uh, six of them in fact. First we're going to go over starting and end tiles, building block types. Um, you also have different uh, variations of those building blocks. Portals and what that means, enemy and weapon placements, and then the build limit. First, let's start with the starting in, the, in tiles. Just like any game, when you start playing, you have to have a spawn point for the player, as well as uh, an end point or an objective to end the game. So let's go ahead and give the players a starting point. Now that they have their spawning point, you need to build a map. So what kind of map do we want to build? Well, we're going to start with a basic and simple one. So next is the block types. So you have escape, which is the end or the way that the players win the game. And chapter types. We'll go over chapter types when you go over the budget mount, which you see in the top right currently. So let's go ahead and put down a few different blocks. We have small, medium, large, extra large, dead ends, hallways, three way junctions, multi junctions, nooks, and reinforcements. So if you hover over each piece when going through it, it'll tell you exactly what it is. But single cells, two to three cells, four or five cells, six cells or larger. We won't go through all of these, but we'll start with the basics. So let's go ahead and give our players uh, a hallway to run through. So we'll go ahead and give them a hallway. Uh, next, we're going to give them a turn. We want the map and not to be just a straightaway. Give them one turn. We'll go ahead and also give them, let's give them a large part of the map. Uh, we'll go ahead and make this. How about that? All right, so now that the player has at least somewhat different area to run, we can even preview this and game by hitting the number one key, as you can see in the bottom right. This will give you an idea of what it looks like in game as you as your player runs through it. So your player will run through the hallway. Here's the corner that we want them to hit. Here's the first large uh, junction that we have introduced for them. This gives them kind of a different, this entire area is playable by the character, as well as you can spawn enemies in here and pickups. So. Let's go ahead and return back to the editor by hitting the same key that you used to preview it. In this case, it's one for the computer. Um, next, we want to change up a little variation. So we've been using the mining tiles, as you can see up here. Next, we're going to swap to ventilation. The tiles are different in the sense that they give you a different uh, environment to play in. So if you want to change from the uh, snowy and ice type biomes or the mining cells, we can change the ventilation. And that gives you more of a man-made scientific type area. We'll go ahead and put down a four-way junction, and then we'll add another little turn. We'll use Q and E on the PC to rotate. I'm not sure what it does on console, but it will tell you up here on the top right here. Now we need the place for the player to end. Uh, we're going to give them a finish point and a way to win the game. Uh, so let's scroll up back up to the escape exits. As you can see, this is quite large. Actually, so this is larger than I anticipated it to be. So we're going to have to move this up at least one more. So let's add in one more little junction here. And we'll add our escape. So, anywhere that is in green is considered part of the chapter itself. Each piece has a little grid box around it that represents how big it is. As you can see, the exit is a 5 by 4, which means that no tiles, such as any, any of these tiles, may overlap in this area. That is to prevent any uh, glitches on the map and anything like that. So, now that we've got our basic map down and our route that our player is going to run, he's going to spawn here, they'll run up through the hallway, around the corner, and over to the exit. This is how they win once they've reached this place. Now, we want to look into enemy and weapon placements. Um, so of course, when designing any level, you want your player to have at least some obstacle to overcome and not just a speedrun course through an empty map, because there's no fun in that. The game starts us up with five default players, uh, or five default enemies, which I will go over later on how to change those in a more intermediate fashion, but for now we'll stick to the default five. So let's say that we want the enemy to, or our player to encounter their first set of enemies right about here. We're going to go ahead and input uh, four juvies, so it'll spawn four juvies within this square. Now, in order to specify what this square means, I'm going to go into a quick preview and we'll show you what that means. If you look in the bottom right, you can see it kind of highlights the area that you're in. It'll highlight the corner once I'm in this corner, showing you that you're within this grid. And once you've passed through this doorway, you've entered into the second grid. And then this our far side of the same piece is the third grid. Within this first grid, which means anything within this small little area, uh, it can spawn these four juvies, so they'll never always be the same. It'll never look exactly like this. It'll just be a variation within this small area. 
Perfect. So we know that the enemies are going to spawn there, but if you know anything about the escape room, each player spawns with a uh, little to no ammo and a unique weapon to each character. So how do we fix that? Well, we want our players to have some weapons, so we're going to give them weapons right before they get there, land them a shotgun, and let's give them some ammo as well. You can select the difference between these two by hitting Q and E in order to switch through between fortifications, stims, weapons, and ammo. So now that we've given them some ammo, a uh, shotgun and some ammo to deal with the juvies that are in the next room, uh, we want to be able to cut this off because as the player comes through, we don't want them to have to be grabbing weapons and fighting enemies at the same time. This is where we get into portals. So portals are essentially just the doorways between parts of the map as well as um, maybe a junction. So let me explain the difference right here. So as we can see right here, there's a little doorway connecting the hallway piece to the corner piece. It's open currently, which means that there is no door, as you can see in the bottom right preview. It's just an open, um, we'll call it a gate. It's an open gate as the player can pass freely in and out, so can enemies. Which means if an enemy sees them on the other side of this, the enemies will charge if they are set to an aggressive mode straight towards them. So how do we fix that? Well, we want our player to have some time. So let's click on that and we can see there is a way to seal the doors permanently, but if we do that, then there's no way for them to complete the game. As you can see, the rest of the map goes red, which means the players cannot pass through that doorway to get to the rest of the map. So that's not what we want. We can also give them, if we don't want to make it an open or closed door, which is this, as you can see, it is now hollow, which means the players can pass through this, but the players must currently press the door in order to open it. So let's take a look at that. As you can see, the door is closed, but when the player walks up to it, the, the door will open. Now, because this is in a preview and we're in a flying state, it'll automatically open because we don't have the ability to walk up to the button and press it. But the players will have to walk up to this button on the left side of the door and press it in order to open that, which will let them into the next room. Let's return to the editor. So now you know this is an open door. There is no door there. This is a passable door, which means the players must open it. And this is a permanent door, which means the players cannot go past that door in any way, shape, or form. There is no way to get past it. All right, so we've got our enemies, we've got our pickups down, and we know exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and give this a shot and play through it and see what it's like from the player's point of view. Alright, so now we're inside of the map that we've created. It's a basic map, but let's go ahead and give this a playthrough and see what the player sees. Alright, so here's our starting area, the place that we put down earlier. Um, the players will then spawn, all of the players will spawn in here that are on this run. They'll run up to this door, they'll open the door and begin their run. Here's the initial hallway that we had placed. As you can see on the bottom right, as they pass through, the fog of war moves, and you can see the rest of the map. Here's the room that we placed the weapon. Here's the weapon, the ammo, and we'll grab the rest of the ammo. Now, the weapon and ammo will spawn in different variations, but it'll all be within this small area. So, we now have allowed the player to grab their ammo and weapon without having to fight the enemies just yet. And now we can hear the enemies on the other side of this door. We'll go ahead and open it and begin our fight. Alright. Now that we've killed all of our enemies, the player is now trying to run from the gas, as you can see on the bottom right side of the map, the green gas, uh, as they are trying to escape to the exit. This applies a small time pressure to your, to your players, so you don't want to put too many enemies or make it too difficult that they can't ever get through. We'll pass through our junction, go around our corner, hit our next junction as well, and proceed to the exit. Now each junction and tile piece can be changed, but we just use the default ones that were there in order to make the map. Now, we'll see you back at the map editor in order to discuss the building limits. Alright, now we're back at the level editor. So, let's go ahead and discuss the last topic of this, the building budget. As you can see on the top right, we have a chapter 1 budget. When you, we have used 715 out of 1,000, we'll call them building points. 
each tile piece that you use uses a certain amount of building points. So in this case, the frozen helipad uses 158, while the starting spawn point also uses a certain amount. It uses 104. Each tile piece is unique and uses a different amount depending on how much physical, uh, we'll call it running space or playable space that the character is in or has, and it varies. So this one, while it's smaller, while it's you know not quite big, it's bigger than this one, uses only one more than the corner piece. That's because if you look at it, the corner piece is quite complex compared to this straight and narrow hallway that really isn't that complex. But if we look at the junction, this one uses 90 as it involves a lot of materials and runnable space for the player. Each piece has its own and unique amount of space unless it's a duplicate tile. So once you've reached the limit of 1000, you will not be able to build anymore. So you may be curious, how do you build large levels? Well. We'll take a quick look at that and go into depth in it in another video. But let's move this piece up a, p a bit and we'll move it to, I think that should be good. We'll go ahead and add in. So we'll earlier we had discussed um, the chapter starts. This is how you make a difference and we oh, do have to move this back one more. This is how you make a difference and change and make bigger maps. So just like a regular game or any campaign of a regular game that you've played through, there's usually checkpoints and different parts of the map that uh, are called chapters. Um, Gears is for sure we know it does this as you play through the campaign. It'll tell you chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and it'll give you a name of the chapter. If you want to make a large map, that's how you begin to make a large map, and you can employ the basics that you've learned here. With that being the case, this also moves down the amount of budget that you've been using as the no longer the, the 200 that you were using for this frozen helipad no longer are applied to the chapter 1 budget, but now applied to the chapter 2 budget. So that pretty much covers the basics, I hope to see you guys in the animated video. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. If you're interested in more, check out my channel.